everybody. Welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know that you will find inspiring, interesting, and always educational. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Today is kind of interesting because I've had a lot of you ask me some questions about some topics that you're interested in. And one of them today is about working abroad. If you're one of those people who've always wanted to go to another country, go to another continent and live and work, but have no idea how that's done, our guest today is going to help you. You all help me to welcome Jane Labatt. Hi, Jane. Hi, Ricky. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Thank you so much for joining us. As you all can probably tell, Jane is in France, but not necessarily in Paris, because I know we live over here and think that everywhere in France is Paris, <laughs> and that's not true. Jane, where is it that you live? I'm, I'm actually about two and a half hours north of Paris in La Havre. La Havre. Now, I'm not even familiar with La Havre. So you La Havre. Have Oh, La Havre. Oh, sorry. Okay. My font is horrible, by the way. <laughs> so we're going to get Actually, we have, you know, we have a Havre, Montana in the States. I did not know that. Yeah. Who knows? No, we stole it from France. You know that. You know how we do. So <laughs> let me ask you, Jane, how long have you been living over there now? Um, wow. It's been, what, uh, about 14, 13, 14 years now, I think. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, wow, um, it's been longer than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I know, because you're just doing it so much. Now, Jane, tell me, what is it that you actually do there? Well, right now, I'm in school. I actually mm -hmm. went through um, what they call a, uh, a layoff, you know, economic layoff okay. in 2019. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, this is my opportunity to do what I've always wanted to do, which is some consulting. Okay. And I decided to go back to school to reinforce my background in project management. And I'm finishing up this come end of May. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. Before I, I worked with the company for about um, 11 years. Before okay, that. man, that's amazing. Now, Jane, were you born and raised in Europe? And so therefore this was natural for you? Where are you from? Well, I was born here, but I wasn't raised here at all. I, okay. I'm from Chicago. I'm a Chicagoan. <laughs> and that's where I was um, really raised. Mm -hmm. Left there at 19, you know, like you did the military thing and then uh, loved it, um, went into government work, and from then on, you know, ended up in Texas, and life does what it does, Yeah, and um, ended up in France, yeah. So yeah, yeah, made that made that move. But I, I know you're probably going to ask questions, so I'll no. Ask. But this is okay because because people want to know things like this because so many people now you know living in the states we're looking overseas for different opportunities and and things. But people have really really fears about going overseas to work. What would you tell somebody who said, "Oh, I want to go over there, but I'm afraid"? What would you tell them? Well, first of all, if you well. You know me, I, I trust God wherever I'm going. Mm -hmm. So it was about, you know, life decisions. I had met someone, we decided we were gonna marry, you know, child and so forth. So, so those kinds of motivations are what brought me here. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be for that. I've been talking to my daughter and I'm actually trying to get her to come over to Scotland or something, you know, awesome. because I really like it there. Mm -hmm. And I think you can just, Go if you're the type of person that takes home with you. You oh, know, that good. means you can, you can be at home wherever you are, mm -hmm. then making this kind of move is for you. But oh, if you have God. to have mama and daddy and your sisters and your brothers, and mm, it'll be a hard, hard move. Because it, yeah. it, it is difficult even when, when you do it for whatever the reasons. Right. Do you have to speak the language if, you're gonna, if you want to move and work abroad? I'd say you should if you want to immediately work. Mm. Um, if you have the resources to be able to be there mm. and learn, or if you come on board with a multinational company where right. maybe the primary language is English or your, your country, the language you know, that you speak, mm -hmm. then perhaps not. But for the most part in a number of countries like in France, yeah, you mm. should speak the language or you should be a quick study. 
Yeah, I can, I can imagine being a quick study. Oh my gosh. So when you're, when you're abroad and you're working over there, you know, everybody knows you need to have your passport, you need to have your this, that, or the other thing. When you're talking about being and living and working over there as an American, what kind of treatment do you find that you get? Well, when I came, um, it was, it's very different when you come here as an adult. I'll say that because I used to come quite a bit uh, when I was younger. My grandfather would send for me for the holidays and it was great. You know, when you go yeah. someplace on holiday, it's always great, right? Mm -hmm. But when you come and you're an adult and you're coming to work, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. um, I think too, it depends on what's going on politically. Right. Because I do think that very much influenced um, how I felt received. Mm -hmm. um, we were going through the end of the bush to the, you know, Obama transition and so forth. And um, Americans, our, our shine kind of has gone a little bit, oh, I wow. think, um, mm -hmm. world, worldwide from, from what I see from other Europeans that I've spoken with and everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was kind of a hard not to, um, not to start the center American, you right. know, <laughs> we are, we are yeah. and, you know, and, and we're used to feeling special and we're so self-confident and this and that, and, and mm -hmm. some good parts about that. But, um, yeah, so initially it was like, you know, kind of a little bit of wake up call because it was different. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, a lot of people then also did treat me special, perhaps mm -hmm. because I was an American. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, you know, they, they, especially the French, the French are very critical uh, of their, them, themselves. Right. So they'll, they'll say, oh, we don't speak English well, and oh, we don't do this, and, 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 and you know, and, and the Americans, we do that better or this. Or, mm -hmm. So it, wow. from that perspective, there were some, maybe some pluses. Mm -hmm. um, to be an American. And it's not true because what I tell them all the time is, look, at least you speak English. Most Americans don't speak anything but English, right? Right, right. So, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> that is so sad and so true. It's interesting that you said about the political climate, how that can change how we're seen oh. over there. And you, so you're no longer the shiny new penny as an American. Yes. Um, and, you know, I won't mention any names, but our right. last president did not help that any the more, you know, <laughs> Obama kind of brought some gloss to that. But our, you yeah. know, I, I honor all of our presidents, but yeah. um, that, nice that caveat. kind of dulled the penny a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So you're over there and you're working every day. Now, do you live in and around uh the people of France, or are you living in primarily an American type settlement? Oh, not at all. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm integrated fully. Okay. I live as any other um, French person. I, I'm, I'm actually French by mm -hmm. birth, mm -hmm. so I'm a Franco-American. Okay. Um, and while I'm here, it's so funny when you're not here. I would have mm -hmm. wanted to put, you know, maybe a head my French side sometimes when I was right. younger and mm -hmm. now that I'm here and when I first got here you I'm put it was putting before you know my my American <laughs> side sure. and now you don't really I don't I don't think about it I'm here yeah um, and and maybe it does come up in conversations where I'll think oh god we wouldn't do it that way or mm -hmm. or this or that I'm here I'm yeah here. And I'm so French. you're you're all French <laughs> I, I think that is so awesome that, that is just so cool so like you know, people who, especially younger folks, who are looking for opportunities because the internet has given us an opportunity to literally work anywhere, anywhere, doing anything, because you can do it all online. So if you were talking to, say, like a high school student or a college student that was looking for opportunities, would you suggest going abroad because of what the internet can offer? I definitely would say um, that maybe there be, it's not really a fear, but mm -hmm. there's an apprehension that people may think because of the internet, well, now I don't have to travel anymore. And mm -hmm. I have a kind of ecological side to my, mm -hmm. my interests. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that's a good thing overall for the planet. Mm -hmm. But that said, for a young person today and the experiences that I've had in my lifetime, and I'm sure you've had, Ricky, mm -hmm. um, for travel, they, 
they definitely need to go abroad. Definitely. Oh, yeah. It opens your eyes. It opens your perspective. I'm, I know this is very cliche, mm -hmm. but it gives you an opportunity to, to think out of the box and think mm -hmm. beyond yourself and your own culture. I there's always something you can learn from someone the french mm -hmm. are they're so creative mm -hmm. musically um publicity wise um mm -hmm. even in french tech which is real hot right now really? they are really very creative people mm -hmm. and there's much that we can learn from them that anyone mm -hmm. can learn not just from the french but from any country or culture that you go to right. so yeah oh no definitely don't use the internet as an opportunity mm -hmm. to be exposed, but then go there. Go wow. there, especially when you're young. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, and, and you know, because like you said, growing up, I was a military brat, so we traveled. Then I went into the military myself and traveled and went to different countries and learned different cultures. And it does give you a different worldview. It, it changes the way you look at people. Yes you know, and look at yourself, you're not the biggest fish in the sea because you're actually in yeah. a fishbowl. It's when you actually get out there that you realize, oh crap, I'm a guppy, not a whale. So <laughs> Exactly, I got a little bit of color, like you said, but that's about it. Yeah. And, oh no, I, I um, of course, this is a biased opinion because mm -hmm. I'm like American, but um, I, I kind of think of myself, oh, I've got the two best cultures. But when I think about that, I mean it in a way of Americans are very nationalistic. We're proud to be American. Mm -hmm. And the French are too. They don't flaunt it quite the bit that we do. They don't have the flags going everywhere, right. you know, and up on every mm -hmm. pole except foreign government buildings. But there's a sense of, of pride for the history, for mm -hmm. the culture, all that they've brought to the world beyond yeah. just, um, you know, gastronomy and, and, and like I said, um, uh, literature and we, and we could go on and on, but yeah. that, that, that sense of, of pride that you mm -hmm. see from other cultures helps you to turn it down a notch and say, wow, I am part of god's big world this yeah. big community yeah. you know so mm -hmm. yeah that that is so awesome so if somebody wanted to say go abroad or at least look into it where do you suggest that that someone would start looking for a job abroad well first it's it definitely you have to think about your language mm -hmm. so whatever language you speak mm -hmm. is going to limit or open opportunities for sure. where you can choose to go mm -hmm. english is fastly becoming the world language. I've mm -hmm. heard a recent TED talk that says it probably will be um, one day that mm -hmm. I don't know. We can debate, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I would definitely say that speaking English opens a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, immediately, you can do the UK, you can do Scotland, you can do Ireland, yeah. um, other countries that speak those languages. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going mm -hmm. beyond Europe, um, but that's the first thing that you need to look at. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing you need to look at is how outgoing are, are you, how willing are you to adapt culturally to somewhere different? Mm -hmm. So if you know you, ugh, if you, he's a little rough on the edges for those kinds of adaptations, maybe go mm -hmm. abroad to a culture that's close to yours. So again, mm -hmm. you know, Canada. Yeah, um, right across the border, and the sure. people are great, and you can even get them a little French in, you know, if you go. That's to true. <laughs> so um, think that, and then last of all, but most also important is what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? Yeah, maybe you love, you know, everything around the Thai culture. Then, mm -hmm. then go, even though you don't yeah. speak the language take a course before you leave a six mm -hmm. month immersion try to be around people in that community expose yourself That's so good. i wouldn't limit myself to the first two options I, i'd say you know you gotta what do you want yeah I, I love that i mean and it's so good immerse yourself into the thing that you love and and i want to ask you this because it's always been interesting to me so if you're not an engineer if you're not a nurse or a doctor can you not work abroad? What if I just want to go and work at McDonald's or Starbucks in da-da-da? You know, what about that? 
you why not why not you are right ricky mm -hmm. you're thinking out of the box you're thinking hey i would i want to go first to experience the culture and it's not about a name or a ticket or a big position right. why not one of the easiest things to do is to mm -hmm. be an english teacher you know wow. loads of schools of i know several um uh teachers here that work in even my children's school systems mm -hmm. who you know maybe they came with their spouse who was you know working for petroleum country or what you know, company right. because you know in, in the lahav area we have some of these businesses mm -hmm. like exxon total and so forth so what what is the the other spouse going to do well mm -hmm. if they speak english and they speak fairly well and they they can show forth you know their resume which is called a cv in europe uh <laughs> then you know they can teach and that's i mean that's rewarding in itself as mm -hmm. long as you enjoy being with children of course that's or true. even other adults i know mm -hmm. someone who taught at the university and taught english courses that wasn't at all her background wow. you know she was an art major mm -hmm. so I, I, there are opportunities oh there are opportunities and look beforehand there yeah. are a lot of expatriate sites um they call them the expat sites mm -hmm. and you can go for the various countries where you're looking for they love to share about their experience bloggers so oh, forth yeah. there's yeah. just no excuse to not be prepared before you leave today i love it there is no excuse so because no. i still have a dream of going to ireland i i just do and you and me too i know I, it's I so crazy and i have it it's shame on you. I, I know. I, I totally am going to get there. I am believing God with all my. I am going to get there. And for yeah, a lot of you, do you call me up? Oh, no, oh, definitely. Because you'll still be in definitely. France. I Ireland. My three are. I said these are my world places I want to do: Australia, Ireland, and Bora Bora. You know. Oh. So Ireland, I have no excuse. It's so close. Yeah shame shame you guys look there this conversation could go on forever but don't forget we want to make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel so you can make sure to always see us make sure to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to leave us a comment and don't worry jane's information and some of the sites that she has cited will be in the description below so you will have an opportunity to look at that but jane my friend before i let you go on the french radio stations these little games you pull numbers and ask oh gosh this, is, this was a question game the game is called this or that it's pretty simple i'm going to give you the choice of two things in you my friend off the top of your head just let me know which one you like the best are you ready okay. to play i'm ready to play all right here we go android or iphone oh iphone right now i'm transition i've transitioned <laughs> oh my gosh read the book or see the movie right now see the movie even though i'm not a real movie person and i like books but i don't have the time i know that's right <laughs> wallflower or life of the party um wallflower I am, I'm sitting back now. Yeah, I changed a little. I'm, I'm watching others. <laughs> I changed a little. Okay. <laughs> summer fun or winter wonderland? Oh, summer fun. Oh, summer yeah. fun. Yeah, me too. <laughs> eat to live or live to eat? Oh, wow. Eat to live. Eat to live. Really? Even I'm though surprised. I'm eating a lot of good food here, I would That's what I would be thinking. I would be living to eat in France. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, wow. out in nature or I'd rather be in the house. I would say that I want to be out in nature, but the reality is not even even with not even with confinement. I'm always in the house. Wow. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi, but I don't drink Harley either anymore. Oh, me neither. Nice, man, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, but Drive I was a Pepsi car. girl. Really? Oh, man. Drive the car or ride in the car? Drive the car. Drive mm. the car. <laughs> oh my, a little control freakness going on right there, my friend. Okay. I want to drive the car. Can I choose the car? Can it be a Tesla? That's I another game, girl. <laughs> I got my little Fiat 500 and I really love it, but that's there you the go. car. 
I like sports or I don't care. I miss it. I, I'm in between. Really? I'm going to say I miss sports. I do. Okay. So yeah, sports I, not I a big it. thing in France? Because I know soccer is huge in Europe. Oh, so. it's, it's huge here, but I'm not a big soccer fan. I was a football with my daddy, girl. Yeah, you know? I hear you. And I miss that. No. I, I mean, you have to be up at like 2 and 3 a.m. to watch the football games yeah. here. I'm just not that much of a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's right. Jay, when you were in high school, what was your first job? Oh, wow. Um, I actually didn't work in high school. My very first job was when I started college and I was a type of a telemarketer for mm -hmm. a politician, a local politician. Oh, wow. Yeah, calling people up, having them hang up on you when you ask political, you know, times. questions. Good times. <laughs> Jane, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so Thanks. much for doing this. But here's the thing, Jane, because I can hear people saying this. I want to hear her say something in French. You know how we are. <laughs> Jane, so you have to lead us out, say goodbye to me in French, or give me give me something, girl. Bon, ben merci beaucoup, Ricky, pour euh, cet entretien. C'était vraiment génial. Au revoir tout le monde, et j'espère que vous viendrez en France. <laughs> I love it. Merci, mon ami. Merci. All right, Merci. you guys. We'll see you next time on Faith on Friday Extra. <laughs>